It might not sound right to our meek ears. We might not see ourselves with such honor. But the gospel remains true and clear that Jesus tells his followers today that you are the salt of the earth, that you are the light of the world. As his Sermon on the Mount continues, following the Beatitudes that we talked about last week, Jesus demonstrates that he has a distinct and great trust in his followers, complementing us in a way with how he sees us, sharing with us that not only do his followers see him with a growing respect, but that it works both ways. Jesus, too, seeing in us a present and future ministry that is going to change the entire world. In ancient Israel, salt was something very special. It was a holy-like element that was mixed with sacrifices. And the idea comes from Moses in Leviticus chapter 2, which states, You shall not omit from your grain offerings the salt of the covenant with your God. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. The salt was a symbol of wisdom and discretion. And the good news that Jesus wants his followers to take to heart today is that we are that salt that is getting mixed into the world. Christians get to be that unique presence that makes the world the place that brings a pleasant odor to God. One of the founding members of All Saints Lutheran Church here, Dr. Darrell Fashing, who used to be the head of religious studies at USF, who passed away a few years ago, shared with us in one of his books, No One Left Behind, that the role of a Christian being salt is quite important and unique. He interprets the passage about salt today by saying that Christians are called to be the salt of the earth, not to turn the whole earth into salt. Spiritually speaking, that would be a major ecological catastrophe. Sitting with him over lunch one day, we were discussing this. And he told me that so many Christians think that their whole purpose on earth is to make everybody else a Christian, claiming that their relationship with God is superior to everybody else's. But you know, salt is only pleasurable to a point. A little salt on a steak is good, but you quickly get to the point where there is too much salt and the steak is completely ruined. It isn't supposed to be all salt. Under this interpretation, which I admit is a pretty radical interpretation, especially for Christians who for so long have felt that it was their calling to convert everybody else. Under this interpretation, we are not given a job to convert everybody else, but instead to be the best presence of Christ that we can possibly be for those who we meet. Seasoning this world with just the right amount of salt and helping it become the most beautiful place that it can be. Helping all people become a, become a pleasing odor that rises up to God's delight. The good news for us Christians, for us followers of Jesus who sit intently learning at his feet, is that we do get a special role to play in the overarching history of God's plan as it is worked out. But it still remains grounded and effective solely because of God. 
This is still God's work, but through our hands. And the way that light is used here isn't much different than the salt analogy. As his followers, Jesus calls you and I to be the light of the world, shining your graces on all like God does with the rain. When Jesus calls us the light of the world, he is giving us the call to go out from our places of comfort and reach around the corners into the places in the world that need the light of Christ in them. We get to be that light, share that light shared with us, helping the world to transform into the place that God wants to see. Jesus puts his faith in us today and gives us, his followers, a great calling to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. What an honor it is to be his presence in the world, to share the true wisdom and light with all that God loves and came for in Christ. And this responsibility is great, but so too a joy to be able to live a very special Christian life, unique in this world, going out and making this place all that it can be, all that God wants it to be. Jesus tells us that it is us here who have come to listen to his words today, who are called to live lives abundantly filled with the Christian virtues of faith and hope and love, shared with us in Christ, and to let them overflow into this world and leave their mark. God transforming it all through the special paths that Christians take on the face of this earth. A little bit of salt and light remaining in every footstep, left for those who need it the most. If salt has lost its taste, what good is it? No good. And so Jesus calls us to be the best salt and light that we can be, to be Christ's presence in a world that we all know can too easily become flavorless and dreary. And straight from Jesus' own mouth, we get to be the salt and light that brightens it all. Christ's true presence in a world that truly is becoming all that God wants it to be. As it is restored in Christ, we are the workers of the kingdom that God has entrusted. And so take confidence in the fact that God has made you what God wants you to be, equipping us well for the work, and that God has placed a faith in us Christians that is quite amazing. In you resides the wisdom and light that is meant for all of the world to share. If we could just see with our own eyes what Jesus sees in us. What a blessing it is to know the level of faith that Jesus Christ has in his followers. What a blessing it is to sit at the feet of Christ and hear that this whole world is becoming everything God wants it to be. Like with Jesus, may we see ourselves, in ourselves, a present and future ministry that is going to change the entire world. May we see in ourselves what God sees in us. You are the salt of the earth, yes, but not just for us, and for those like us, 
or who we want to become like us, but salt for the entire earth. You are the light, not for a closed number of people, but you are the light for the whole world. Amen.